Dragon's Den is open for business. I don't often say this, but your pitch was awful. You've got to be quiet for this little bit, Peter, if that's all right. Ouch. A place where budding entrepreneurs are given a once-in-a-lifetime chance. You have this most bizarre way of answering questions. <laughs> Stop it. To present their wares to five captains of commerce. You wanted to see how credible we are, yeah. so I'm about to show you. Well, show me. Some will succeed and go on to make millions. Whee! Others will fail and leave with nothing. Make him a counter offer. Tell him to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. With the occasional visit from some wealthy VIPs... I can't not give you money. I can't not make you an offer. First deal in the day. I didn't want it anyway. The hunt is on to find the next big money-making idea. Dragons are go. <laughs> Tonight. We hunted, we fished, we slept in caves and pretty much survived. OK, this looks like my kind of pitch. If you had something to convince me otherwise, now's the time to tell me. Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I think out of the box. Yeah. They think I'm crazy. I think you're crazy to ever think that you should put yourself in a box. How can we keep losing money? My mind has gone blank. I want 40% of the business. 40% the vampire is back. Yeah. I'm Naomi. And I'm Dan. Do you want some water? Yes. My favourite one is him. Which one? Stephen? Mm -hmm. I think the dragons are not going to have a clue what is going on when we come out of that lift. I think we're different. We're a first. Yeah. 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 <sighs> and a last. Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so this looks quite artistic. Craft experience that takes you to the motherland. It's not African, that's um, prehistoric man. Or woman. I feel like Rekha Walsh is going to walk through, through the, uh, the lift door now. It's amazing that you thought of that by looking at that. I think we're too young for that, Stephen. You know, that was 50 years ago. There you go, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did I say? Oh, no, oh, no! Oh, no, oh, no! Hello Dragons, we're husband and wife team Naomi and Dan and these are our cave children Maggie and Wren. And we're here today to ask for 40,000 acorns, so I mean pounds, for 20% investment in our company. We are the Stone Age company and we deliver Stone Age education and interactive workshops to primary school children in and around England. So these clothes that we're wearing today are outfits that we've made ourselves to go and live out in the wild. <laughs> We've lived out in the wild twice for around about a month, just surviving off the land. We hunted, we fished, we foraged, we slept in caves and pretty much survived. We did. <laughs> <laughs> it was after our first experience that we came back inspired to set up the Stone Age Company. Um, in 2014, the national curriculum changed and it brought in Stone Age education for primary school children. And we jumped at the opportunity to deliver our experiences for them. We know there's over 16,000 primary schools in England um, and we deliver to about 100 of them at a time a year. It is with your help that we hope we might be able to expand taking a caveman or a cavewoman into the classroom to deliver more of workshops across England. We were wondering if one of you might want to come up and join Maggie and Wren in doing some cave art. <laughs> yes. That's really good artwork. Do I need to dress up as well? You do need a wig on. And it, yeah, oh, I need a wig, wig on, do I? Stone Age Education for Schools is the idea from Naomi and Dan Wormsley. That's actually quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> the husband and wife team are looking for a £40,000 investment in return for a 20% stake in their company. Exceptionally long arms, I like it. Just yes. And its thighs. I think that's really good. It's the biggest one on there, isn't it? Good cave woman, this yeah. one, isn't it? <laughs> Boom. Thanks, girls. Thank you, girls. Good job. The kid's prehistoric painting has hit Sarah Davies' sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. And it looks like Deborah Meaden also has an affinity with the offering. Do you know, every morning when I'm at home, I get up in the morning and I walk barefoot around the garden mm -hmm. just to keep in touch with the earth. It's the first thing I do, come rain, shine, That's ice, really weird. snow. 
What? No, I was thinking how amazing that was. That's not weird at all. Well, we don't Grounding. touch the world. We do not touch the world. And the least I can do is connect with the Earth at least once a day. Indeed. Love that. Um, right, so I understand where you are today. What's the turnover so far of the company? In 2018, we turned over £53,000 and a profit of 3000 And then in 2019, um, we took a lot of time out, so we turned over £34,000 and a loss of £18,000. Um, and then in 2020, Covid hit and we turned over £22,000 and a loss of £18,000. Um, we had a dormant year in 2021 because there was no schools opening, we couldn't travel to schools. And in 2022, um, our, again, the confidence in schools booking us to come in was very slim. And so we turned over £27,000 with a loss of £18,000 on that one. OK, so that's yeah. 2018, really, was your, was your best year. Yeah. yeah. OK, um, now, that still didn't deliver. So if you want to repeat that model going forward, what's going to be different? Because that really isn't going to sustain you in a yeah, living. Yeah, absolutely. So if we want to have more teams, we could potentially take in three times the amount that Dan and I are taking so, currently. OK, so if they were doing what you're doing, I mean, they might not be, because you're obviously very good, you're the founders and you're very good, then even your best year, that you'd be looking at a turnover of about £200,000? Around about that, yeah. And how much profit would that make? That would make, for us... Oh, we've got num numbers for profit for that. If we're paying staff... What do we work it out? Yeah, so we worked it out to be around about £8,000 a month, but we're paying around 2000 in wages. So on £200,000, I think... <sighs> My mind has gone blank. This is lovely, but the, is, this is like a Stone Age budgeting process. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you did it in acorns, I could have got it. No, me and Dan. Hi. Hi. I love the fact that you're living your passion. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm listening to this and, and I'm saying to myself, you've made losses more than you've made profits. Yeah. How are you living? We have some guardian angels. Uh, currently, we live in a um, uh, static caravan in my parents' driveway, so we're not paying rent so that we can practice living a bit more sustainably. And I'm also there to look after my parents. We live pretty frugally. Um, somehow we've got by. Um, we would like to be making more money. Right. That would be really lovely. How are you funding your losses? Friends and family. Literally friends and family. They believe in you. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, totally. They have done over the years. We've never quit. What would you do, just to better interrupt, what yeah. would you do without the friends and family? What would you have done? Or how, how would you have done something differently? I'll let you answer that. I, I think... mean, that, that's hard to know, because I can't even remember you know, going to my, my parents and saying, oh, I need the mortgage paid. I can't remember those specific times. Um, no, no, but, but it, my point is, though, you've had several years, like, yeah. you've, made it, you've been really honest, which is lovely, that you've lost 18,000 a year. Yeah. Now I put you in a position where you didn't get that 18,000. What would you have done that first year? And the reason why I'm asking this, because yeah. I know what it's like to have nothing. I've slept in a warehouse for a long time with no money, not even any existence and that realization set in I've got to go and get a job because I have a family and it's just it was terrible time of my life mm -hmm. but I got through it and then I started my own thing again and boy my life changed obviously yeah. immeasurably but it's a difficult question I know it is mm -hmm. but if we go back 12 months you lost 18,000 mm pounds -hmm. you'd owe that 18,000 pounds to somebody you'd be in debt you'd mm -hmm. either got debt collectors knocking at the yep. door You've got, you've got trouble. What would you have done if that had been the case last year? I think if that had been the case, then, you know, like anybody, you have to adapt and we'd have to find another job and earn money and come back and start again. Dan, that, that was really important for me to get that answer, yeah. actually. Thank you. It was the answer that I was hoping. Yeah. Because I didn't want to hear that, actually, you would have just gone into a hole and just... There's no way. Blood, dissolved. sweat and tears have gone into this. <laughs> Sleepless nights, you know. We, like, we believe in this. We believe in this so much. Naomi and Dan, you know, you're living your world. <laughs> You've said it. Mm -hmm. You're living your world. 
And I admire that because in a way, you know, you don't want much, you don't need much. It's, it's amazing. Your pitch was too much about how you live your world. I see there's too much passion in it. Yeah, and there is a lot of passion. Nonsense. And, and, yeah. and, and you didn't come Nothing across and say, this is our business strategy, yeah. this is our business idea, you know. Right. And in this case, unfortunately, there's not a plan, and, but I do wish you all the best. And I'll keep an eye out for you guys. But today, I'm not going to invest them out. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't ever let anyone tell you it's too much passion. Yeah. There's yeah, never yeah. enough passion. And do you know what? It is refreshing to see somebody so passionate about their business. But my big concern is that what you're passionate about is not running a business. It's teaching those kids about being in the outdoors. And with all due respect, you haven't given us a great deal of confidence, mm -hmm. certainly not me sitting here, that you have all of the business and entrepreneurial skills needed to build a successful business. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Yeah, Appreciate thank that. you. Um, the mission you're on, I think, is a really, really important one reconnecting with nature and getting back to being a little bit more human. But today, although I see you guys as being incredible, and I really think that the mission is going to make you prouder than any profits ever could, yeah. I can't see the business here. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I do want you to carry on, because I think it's really important. Thank, Thank you. you. I think you're... Um, I completely get why you're here. Um, but I, it feels to me like I don't think you know what it'd be like to have an investor. I think you're right, yeah. <laughs> because it changes the world. If you had an investor on board, you would fall out of love with the things that you're doing because you love doing this. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine sitting in a room grilling you over the margins and the profit and the wages percentages, you know, I, I, I just don't think you'd like it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> lots, Thanks, of, you know, lots of things Thank I love you. about you, mm -hmm. but as an investment, I'm afraid it's, it's not, it, I just don't think it's right. So I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be offering you an investment, I'm out. Thank you. Well, this has been an adventure, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little one. Um, I, I really appreciate what you're doing, and I do understand what you're doing. Because I set a foundation up in 2005. I wanted to help, really wanted to reset, pe rewire children at school, because I felt that there was, business was not embedded in our education system. And what happens is I give money to six-year-olds. Mm -hmm. I lend them money. <laughs> And I trust them that they're going to start whatever business they want. And all they have to do is give the money back to me. And if they don't make money and they lose the money, they don't have to give me back a penny. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me a little bit of what you're trying to do. Mine's about doing something really good to help young people yeah. have a better chance of a brighter life. Yours is, but you want to generate income for that. So I would love to find a way to help you and support you. I'm happy to do that and find ways to introduce you to my team and we can see where that could take you because I think that could be the biggest gift I could give you today. Yeah. So, so oh. I'm going to say that I'm out, but I think you might find your dream might become a reality after all mm -hmm. without having a dragon breathing fire into your cave. Thank, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank that you. Means so much you really deserve it. You. Good luck. Well yes. done. Thank you so much. Well well well. Thank you. Well Take done. Care. I'm going to tell them kids they did great. Yeah, <laughs> we will. No investment for Dan and Naomi, but they do leave the den with the promise of some help from Peter Jones. Well, I think that's fantastic. That's cool. that's, in fact, that's better than go, walking out of here with an investment, yeah. Peter. Amazing. Amazing. Well done. We still win. <laughs> they are living their passion. As are you. As are you. As are we all. Yes. Yes. As are we all. They gave us hope. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Don't, oh, don't you start? They gave us hope in a way that, you know, they saw our passion and our belief. We get to continue being us with some guidance, you know. It's so <laughs> blessed and lucky right now. Yeah. As always. Well. Lots of emotions. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.
My name is Bhavan, I'm 38. I'm going to be bringing a South Asian beauty regime to the mass market. Bring some colour into the place. Exactly, colour and culture. South Asian beauty is being celebrated right now more than ever. And I'm so proud that I can show something that I used to hide in school. Now, diversity, inclusion is celebrated so much and I'm so proud to be adding something to that movement and celebrating something that I've loved since I was a little girl. <laughs> Hi Dragons, my name is Pavan and I'm the founder of Pavan Beauty. I'm looking for £50,000 investment in return for 20% equity of my company. I was three years old when I watched my mother apply henna on a bride a day before her wedding. I was immediately hooked and I knew I wanted to be the best. After breaking the Guinness World Record for being the world's fastest henna artist, working on some high profile projects like creating a window display for Harrods, I came up with the idea of opening up a henna bar, a term and a concept similar to the brow bars and nail bars we've become so accustomed to. Our mission is to bring Indian inspired body art to the high street and making it accessible to all. We will be the first brand to make henna retail ready. I'd now like to invite a dragon to come and experience our product. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> I thought I thought you'd all be jumping on. That's why I got in there so early. Well, we didn't get a choice. She <laughs> hadn't finished her sentence. I know, that's why I said it quickly. Come on over. <laughs> a business that brings the South Asian art of henna to the masses is the offering of Pavana Luwalia Danjal. Is it permanent? So we've got two that last on the skin for 10 days but we've got the zero commitment range that washes off, so that's what I'm going to put on you. She's seeking a £50,000 investment... Oh, my hand's shaking. ..in return for a 20% stake in her company. Sarah, I'd love you to do me. As crafting queen Sarah Davies' creative skills are put to the test for a second time this evening, how will she fare against the world record-breaking Pavan? Excuse me. <laughs> Did I have a yours? Yeah, I would say that's very similar. I would say that's very similar, almost identical. You have you have competition. Exactly. With Stephen Bartlett and Deborah Meaden suitably styled, Sarah Davies can hang up her henna cone and kick things off. Having lovely to meet you. Uh, that's beautiful. I must say it's the first time I have been up close and personal with any henna product, yes. as I have shown with my artwork on Stephen. Is that how it's supposed to look, to be honest? Yes. So it, there's no right or wrong. <laughs> Stuttered. No. <laughs> there's no right Very or wrong. Very good answer. It's about being that, creative. That looks like you've just spilt Tipex on yourself. Yeah. Refund. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, what I'm really interested in understanding, so the business model, so you are talking about wanting to open a henna bar, you've opened one henna bar and you want to roll out. Well, what, what is the model and at what stage of the business are you at? Currently, we have a henna bar in Selfridges, a permanent location that we've been in since 2015. I have six girls who work for me, but after COVID, we were forced to pivot, mm -hmm. which is what forced us to open our product line. So these are the individual cones that you buy. We've got two metallic colours. We've got five neon colours, green, yellow, orange, pink and blue. So you just said, Sarah, you've never ever been in touch with actual henna products. That's because typically the henna is only available at your local Indian grocery store ugly looking, not retail ready, mm -hmm. or people are now, artists are now selling it on Amazon and Etsy. However, I would like to see henna alongside your mascara or your nail polish in different retail outlets like Boots to make that available to a wider market. So is the investment today in the entire business, both the uh, concession in Selfridges and also all of the products? Absolutely, so there are three revenue streams at the moment. One is the henna bars themselves, the second part is retail products, and the third thing is, corporate, I say corporate events, but events in general. So, in that case then, uh, how long have you been doing the retail products? So we've officially launched the retail products uh, this year, January. Right, So, because well, what I was going to ask for was the last few years of sales, but that's not overly relevant because they won't include the retail products. So, but I still want to know yeah. those so that I can get a feel for the scale of the business without that. 
So end of 2021 was 25, because that was the year of COVID. Net, six, net loss of 1,600. 2022 was 43,000, net loss of 1,200. Sales to date this year, 21,000, net profit of 8,000. And of that 21, how much of it was in the pop-up and how much of it was retail products? So in, uh, in the henna bar, it's 16,000. 4,000 has been events and the remaining on our products. I'm just intrigued. You said 16,000 the whole of last year in the henna bar. Not of last year. The, the whole of last year at the henna bar was 36,000. But that 36,000 employed six people. Not, not at one time. We have one, because of COVID, we've reduced our shift time. But there's no COVID last year that affected Selfridges. So the reason why is because the football hasn't picked up. Now in 2016, 2017, our sales were 125,000 in Selfridges. Those were the kind of things oh, we were wow. making. And how much did you make net that year? A net loss of 214. 214 pounds? Yeah. Perfect. I'm, I'm uh, instinctively, I know, you, I know you can't make a judgment about a business in less than five minutes, but it doesn't kind of surprise me because I'm not sure that you can create a business with the overhead of being in a place like Selfridges and the staff and the training. I don't think, I can't see how it's possible to create a business going to make you money. So I understand the pivot to this. So this is your business pitch then, really, isn't it? It isn't the bars. Mm, uh, no. OK. Give me an idea of how much would that... What is that going to cost? So one of those cones, the cost to make it is £2, and we retail it at £10. Have a, can I check something? Absolutely. If I want to do it this at the moment, you, you talk about my options as the local grocery yeah. store. Or Amazon or Etsy. All oh, right. so if I went on to one of the platforms, like Etsy, for example, how many offerings would I have? Probably a lot um, and cheaper. I think you could pick up a henna cone for about five or six pounds. OK, so you've got quite a hard sell there, haven't you? Because mm. you've got to somehow get your message out that you're different to all of these other offerings that I'm going to be offered when it comes up. And how are you doing that at the moment? So no henna cone is packaged the way you've got them in those boxes at the moment. They are made at home. They haven't got the labelling on them, barcodes, that kind of thing. So we've made sure that all of our products are cosmetically approved. So our cost is high because we've had to go through all of those regulations to make sure that it is retail ready. Pavan, I haven't read this because it's quite small. Mm. Tingling sensation is normal. What causes the tingling sensation? So That's not usually a good thing. Clove oil and eucalyptus oil. Are there warnings if you're allergic? Because some people get quite a reaction to eucalyptus. Yes, so, and what we do is we offer patch test if they want to come into store and have a patch test. That's in store. What about online, though? I mean, no one touch wood has come up with a reaction, but if that's something that you think we should add on to the product, we're more than happy to do that. Yeah. So, Pavan, the concern I've got with this is I can see how within your community there is huge demand for this. That demand is not going anywhere, that's going to be continuous. Mm -hmm. I can't see how that demand is going to stretch outside of your culture and your community. OK. I'm, I may be wrong, mm -hmm. but I, I can't... I am not seeing any evidence to support that. Okay. If you had something to convince me otherwise, now's the time to tell me yeah. before I say those words. So basically, we've have found reports that even last week, Vogue wrote an editorial saying that South Asian beauty is at the forefront of the beauty industry right now, and not just for the South Asian community, but for everybody. The first thing that non-Asian people say to me is, God, I love henna, I just never know where to get it done from. OK, so therein lies the problem with the mass market product. The issue they say is they don't know where to find the product, yeah. but they don't know what to, where to get it done. And, I mean, I am pretty artistic, and you saw the terrible job I did of this on Stephen. Terrible. Now, I'm not saying that I wouldn't get better with a little bit more practice, yeah. but if I wanted to have henna done, I would want to go to someone who I would expect would provide the product. Because your community is well-serviced with the current distribution channels, mm -hmm. 
It worries me that there's not the demand in the marketplace for this on a mass market level. So it's, it's not an investment for me today and I'm out. But I've really enjoyed learning a little bit more about the industry. Thank you. Pavin, um, I, I completely disagree with Sara, where she said that she doesn't see how demand will stretch outside of your community because I have already seen in my partner, in people in my, my offices, etc., that henna has huge demand. But Sara is completely correct when she says that I can't imagine there being a huge market for people doing do-it-yourself henna or the people that are henna professionals going to Boots to get their supplies. OK. It feels like the do-it-yourself market would be the ones that go to Boots, but henna is such a technical thing, as Sarah said, that you wouldn't go to Boots to buy it. I would absolutely bet on you as an entrepreneur, but I, but I don't quite have enough conviction to bet on this as a business. OK. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you the very, very best. Thank you. See, I also agree with Stephen. I get you're right. This is crossing over into mainstream, and it and it will ha definitely have its moment. I yeah. I'm loving wearing this. Thank you. It's making my hands feel nice. I have people who say when they wear it, they feel like they've got superpowers. The trouble is, at the moment, there is no sign in your business at all that you even Profit. you're even. I know you want help, but you're not investable. You're just not at that stage yet. Okay. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you. Um, look, I, I gave you. I said what I thought earlier, and I think you're doing the right thing to focus on on this product. product. I really do, and I think that you've got an opportunity potentially to get this into market. I think you're almost retail ready now, so I think you've done a really, really good job. Thank you. But I don't think that for me to build this into a big business. I'm not going to be your right person to help you here. OK. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you. Pavan, you're good. And I, I'm not, I'm torn a little bit because you're good, but I don't think you are going to rock the henna market. I think it's too established, mm -hmm. too much out there. But what I do believe is you create a craze in henna for kids in colours and designs. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of young little girls, when they get to the age of 10 and 11, they start wanting to explore with a little forced makeup. You get the papers that they can stick on their faces or hand and paint over. You might have a business. Mm. That's, that's my view. You know? But I know the children's market. Mm. And I know that kids love this sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah. You think I'm crazy? No, not at all. I'm fortunate, I, I, look, one part of me wants to invest in you, Aww. right? Because Go I'd on, like Tisha. to see that little journey. But, there, but there's nothing tangible, nothing tangible mm. that says to me... Um, what could you say to change his mind? He's about to go out. <sighs> I really don't know. If I said to you, if I gave you a, a month mm -hmm. to come up with a, a pack for kids, I could do that. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'll give you the whole 50,000, mm -hmm. but I want 40% of the business. 40%? The vampire is back. Go, go to the back wall and think about it. Oh, God, I don't know. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I'm like, what? What should I do? <laughs> um... Against the run of play, Tuka Suleiman swoops in with a lifeline for Pavan. But at 40%, that's twice the equity the entrepreneur was initially willing to give away. I can't part with 40%. Tell you what I'll do. If I get my money back within 12 months, go down to 30%. I could do that. Done. Great. Yeah, oh, hello. Hey. Thank right. you Success so much. for Pavan. Excellent. You come up with the goods. I will. I'll come up with the goods. <laughs>
who leaves with investment and a roadmap to riches from High Street heavyweight to Kusulim. I'm really excited to work with Tuka. I think this is going to help us get on the way in retail and really expand our product line. Um, and I know he's going to add so much value to our business. Tuka, I think that you look, you've backed a good entrepreneur. Well, let's see what, let's see what she comes up with. I'm Isaac, I'm 27, I'm from Nottingham. From the age of 14, I've set up small side hustles. In my university days, uh, I did a little kind of Dragon's Den pitch. Um, fast forward, you know, a few years, and I'm actually in the real Dragon's Den. It's a lot more nerve wracking, but you know, I'm confident in my product and I just can't wait to, to get in there, really. Is it an ice cream business? Polar. Okay, this looks like my kind of pitch. It won't just be me in the den, I'll also be bringing my mum along, so it's going to be a real family affair. You can love these. Oh, <laughs> I hope. Hi, I'm Isaac, Chief Pot Maker at Polar, and today I'm pitching for £50,000 in return for 15% of my revolutionary ice pop company. Here at Polar, we've reinvented the ice pop. Gone are the days of blue stained tongues, artificial flavours and ingredients you can't pronounce. We've created a more natural, better for you and tastier alternative. All of our ice pops are lovingly handmade with real fruit and high quality ingredients. They are dairy free, naturally low calorie and taste absolutely delicious. Four summers ago, I started Polar by purchasing an ice pop cart off eBay, renovating it and pushing it around my city centre, selling my ice pops to passers-by. Fast forward to now, and we are stocked in health food shops up and down the country. We also attend festivals with our fleet of ice pop carts and sell direct to consumer via our own website. Over the past four months, we've been refining our brand new freeze at home ranges, including our premium alcoholic ice pop range and our 100% natural, no added sugar range of ice pops, and are currently in talks with new wholesalers and stockists to expand the retail arm of our business. As well as this, we've built up a huge following on TikTok with 74,000 followers and over 40 million views. We are a very exciting time in the business and we would love a dragon or dragons to join us. Thanks a lot for listening. Now, who would like to get taken back to their childhood with an ice pop? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's some samples, Mum. Mum? Mm. Yeah. Is that all for me? A natural ice pop business with a growing range of products is the brainchild of Isaac Greenway Tambini. Oh, my God, that is... Brilliant. OK, I'm in, and I haven't tasted them yet. Based on that reaction alone. He's looking for £50,000... That's my favourite. ..in return for 15% of his company. That elderflower is absolutely delicious. Yeah, so the elderflower in that is actually picked by my mum in and around Nottinghamshire. Clever mum. As the rest of the dragons polish off their pops... Thanks for that, Mum. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. OK. It's time for Deborah Meaden to put hers down and start the interrogation. Isaac. Hi. My goodness, I'm going to have to sit here and listen to those slurp their way through the most <laughs> delicious... Oh, look, look, this is torture. <laughs> Stop it. Um, so, just so I understand where the business yeah. is now... Yeah. You started three years ago? Four years ago. Four years yeah. ago. Talk me through your turnover from yeah. then to now so I can get an idea of the size of yeah, the business. Yeah, sure. So, first year revenue was £1,000, net profit minus £2,600. Second year revenues of £6,000, net profit minus £11,700. Year three revenues of £16,000, net profit minus 11300 And year four revenues of 32000 and a net profit of minus £5,500. OK, um, now, I bet you can guess my next question. How can we keep losing money? Yeah, so, for us, we, we haven't outsourced production, so we've been reinvesting a lot of our products into our kitchen, which we had to fit out from scratch. You know, our first two years I spent in my kind of family home kitchen, it was all very handmade, you know, we were getting... I was going out and picking strawberries, uh, heat-sealing ice pops with hair straighteners. 
like, yeah, very handmade. I realized a couple of years ago, you know, these products weren't tailored towards the mainstream market. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to spend all afternoon juicing lemons. So we've got a machine capable of producing 15,000 ice pops a day. So we're really ready to, you know, push these products out to pretty much everywhere and, you know, build a profitable business. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk you through how much, how much would I have to pay for the strawberry and vanilla, yeah. which is lovely. Yeah, so the strawberry and vanilla, it costs 30p to make. Yeah. It's then sold at a wholesale price of 99p, yeah. and it retails at 199. But I, Isaac, at two pounds a pop, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yep, so our more premium range and our gelato range, yeah, they are a more expensive product, which is what led me into creating our more affordable, no added sugar range which for a multi-pack of 12 sits at a retail price of 3 99 and at 33p per pop, we feel that's quite a, an affordable option. And also, because my kids love all this sort of stuff, but my yeah. kids make this themselves at home. So where you can make them at home, there is still a market for the clean label ice pops. For example, the leading healthy ice pop brand in the US is selling over 100 million tubes for a reason. And who's your nearest competitor in the UK? Yeah, so in terms of kind of cleaner label ice pop brands. There's no one out there in the market at the moment. Why is that? It, I, it just hasn't been done. But why hasn't it been done? So what, there must be a reason why. You're saying that there's a gap in the market, but is there a market in the gap? Yes. Because nobody's entered it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's so my hard. question comes back to why. Why has nobody done it? I honestly think just, just nobody's had the idea yet. It's been done in other countries. Have you asked? Have you met up with manufacturers? Have you spoken to people? Have you spoken to the supermarket? Have you spoken to people to understand why that's the case? No, but I can say whilst it's, you know, it's, it's hard to get sales data on iSpots, but UK consumers definitely have a palette for frozen treats. You know, we're selling 20 million pounds worth of Calippos every year in the UK. But with the market gearing towards, you know, healthier products, I think, you know, for, for sure there, there is a market in a, you know, a cleaner label, more premium ice pop. Isaac, so it's going to sound a little bit brutal, but I mean it with the best intention. Yeah. I genuinely don't believe that any major supermarket will stock the product. Okay. And it's it's not because it's not a fantastic product. You send that to any buyer, you'll get the same reaction that we've got. And I, I kind of worry that you've maybe come in the den thinking any one of us could pick up the phone to a senior buyer in any one of those supermarkets and ask for a listing. And the difficulty is, if there is not a product like this in there at the moment, yet they have suppliers who could easily make that product, it's because there will not be sufficient demand for it. If I was in your shoes now, I would look at, well, how do I build a business? And I believe if you go to festivals, you will continue to recruit customers who will buy. I can tell you now, I will be repeat ordering that product regularly because it is another level to any other product I've tasted like that. And all you needed was that one introduction for me to see it. To me, that is the business model that you want to build on. So I think there's an opportunity here in the business, but it's not the one that you're pursuing. So I don't think investment's right for you. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but that you've got a new customer. Cheers. I really respect you. I really respect it. The hustle you've shown to persist, you know, shows that there's a real innate passion there for this. And even hearing that you've been slogging this cart around, giving away your ice cream, nothing yeah. but admiration. You, you have grown the sales year over yeah. year, which is somewhat promising. But I just look at it and I, I can't see how 50K is going to be enough to get you to a point where you have anywhere near the scale in the next couple of years for an investor to get, to get a return. With that, I'm going to say I'm out. But I do commend you because the, the product is incredibly delicious and I admire your perseverance as a young entrepreneur. OK, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Um, the, the, the problems I think you're going to face is that this is a changing marketplace. You have got giants in yep, there. Yep. You know, they've got their nose to the ground. They know exactly where the consumer is headed and what they want, and they're going to, you know, they're going to do it, and they're going to get there ahead of you. That doesn't mean to say you don't have a business, yep. and I will bet you that this isn't the business 
but that you'll learn from this business, you'll do well enough with it to set yeah. yourself up in the next business and the next business, because you're capable of doing it. Okay. So you can hear from that, I won't be investing, but I would be encouraged. Thank you, Deborah. I'm right. out. Isaac, um, there's nothing more wonderful than somebody trying to start and thinking of a, an idea and coming up with it and making it work. But personally, giving you genuine, honest feedback, I think that you have let yourself down by not understanding the market of which you're in. And I strongly advise you to get that really going for you. Really understand the market that you're about to enter. Because you're, when you sit in front of an investor, we don't and should never understand the market better than you. Yeah. So I wish you the very best of luck. I can't invest today from what I've seen and say that I'm out. OK. But good luck. Cheers, Peter. Huh? I just want to ask you a simple question, because, you know, I think out of the box. Yeah. They think I'm crazy. Crazy's good in my no, eyes. I think, yeah. you're, I think you're crazy to ever think that you should put yourself in a box. Yes. <laughs> so, just want to ask you a question. Yeah. So if you wanted to scale up production, yeah. you could do that? Yeah, so we've got all the machinery. We've right. got our production space. It's fully kitted out. So, so let's assume that you've got the product, you've got those little things there, yeah. which you can lease. And let's be honest, I've seen them in the park, you know, where they queue up 50-fold to, to, to get one of these. Yeah. Forget the price, because when you're in the park, you pay anything, right? Yeah. And you could create a franchise model that alone is a bit in itself. Yeah, so there's, there's definitely a franchising opportunity you there. I actually think that's quite a good idea. Yeah, I'm saying, so <laughs> I'm not here to write your business model for you. Yeah. But I've, look, I've listened to, to everything and I say it's a shame. Because you've got great product. Finished product that I tasted, I think it's fantastic. Somehow, I want to shake you up and say to you, Isaac, you've got something, you've got to rethink. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we know we've got a really great product. What I can say is, you know, other aspects of the business not, might not be perfect, but I believe my sheer determination and passion is really what's going to, you know, allow this business to succeed. And I don't have an ounce of quitting me. This is, this is not over for you, this is the beginning. And I believe that if you stop and then focus, you'll have a fantastic business. You've learned a lot. Yeah. You're in a privileged position to listen to f five great brains here. Take on board what we've all said, and I wish you all the best. I'm out. Thank you, Isaac. Thanks. Isaac, Thanks, guys. Well, well done, mate. Well done. Well done, mate. See you soon. Tell your man we love our cardio. I will do, I will do. Plenty of belief in Isaac's ability, but not enough to secure a dragon for this business. I didn't get investment today, but you know, the dragons really loved the taste of our products. And I think with food, you know, that's the most important thing. I actually genuinely got a sugar rush halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've like demolished three of them before we started. <laughs> I've, done, I've done the whole box. <laughs> I'm going to keep on, you know, making sure I get my ice pops in as many people's hands as possible. In the next few years, you will see us in some of those larger retailers, you know, whether it be the products we have right now or a future range. Hi, I'm Sydney. I'm Jess. And we're here because we're building the future of fine jewelry. I think we're going to get a gift. Oh, I'm in. Wait till we see what you get first. Yeah. It might be like a belly bar or something, you never know. I'll have to replace my other belly bar though, then, won't I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> if we walk out of the den with a dragon, I think the value added is definitely not just the money, it's really their network, their expertise and that's what we're looking for. And should the duo manage to secure any offers, they have a secret weapon. She's a great negotiator. Do you think? Yeah. I don't know. So let's see, <laughs> I guess. Hey, dragons. I'm Sydney. And I'm Jess. We are the founders of Kimai the brand on a mission to bring transparency to the fine jewelry industry. 
Sydney and myself both grew up in Antwerp in Belgium, the diamond city of the world. But even by knowing diamond traders or jewelers directly, there was no way for us to know where the diamonds we were buying were coming from. So four years ago, we decided to create Kimai. It's a fine jewelry brand made exclusively with lab-grown diamonds and recycled gold. Our diamonds are grown in a lab and are chemically and optically identical to mined one without their negative impact. The diamond industry has known many controversies over the years, from unethical mining environment to huge negative environmental impact. Our generation, as younger customers, were looking for more traceability and approachability in the brands we're buying from. Our jewelry has been seen by celebrities such as Meghan Markle, Emma Watson, or Jessica Alba. We're looking for 250,000 pounds in exchange for a 3% stake in our business. We've got some pieces for you. Have a look and let us know if you have any question. Bling, without the ethical or environmental baggage. Thank you. Is the offering of Jessica Watch and Sydney Newhouse. How much does this one cost to buy? I'm blind. <laughs> This one is 16,000. 16,000. The Belgian born duo are seeking 250,000 pounds in return for a 3% share in their luxury jewelry brand. And how much is the one you've given me? This one is 6,000. Oh. <laughs> Not only has Stephen Bartlett been presented with the most expensive ring. Are we giving these back? Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. yes. He also appears most engaged by the business. Jess Sidney, um, really interesting, really, really interesting. Can you start by just giving, giving me some detail on the difference between a lab-grown diamond and a real diamond in terms of price and also demand, whether that's a growing demand or it's a stagnant demand? First of all, they are identical physically, chemically and optically. In terms of price, uh, lab-grown diamonds are less expensive than mine, around 50 to 60 percent less expensive. And in terms of like growing demand, last year um, the units of lab-grown diamonds sold were almost equal to the units of mine diamonds sold. Is there something proprietary about the process that you go through to produce the products that you make? So we don't manufacture the diamond. We work with a lab directly, right. with whom we have close relationship. We really focus on the brand side of it. We believe that the, the, in order to change that market, it really comes through a brand because that's how we're able to educate the customers. And so what we focus on is really the design and creating something unique that is unique to us because that's where we believe the value is over time. Right, okay. Um, so your first year of trading was when? So like 2019. Can you run me through sales in 2019? Yeah, um, so 350,000 pounds in revenue and a net loss of minus uh, 350 pounds. 350,000? Yeah. The second year, we've done 890,000 and a net loss of minus uh, 350. And last year, we've done 3 million pounds and a net loss of minus 100. And this year, we're on track to do 5 million pounds and a profit of 500,000. Have you taken prior investment? So we've business? launched without any investment. And then two months after our launch, we got Meghan Markle to wear our pieces, which enabled us to grow the revenue significantly. And from there, we raised $1.2 million. So last question then. How did you get Meghan Markle to wear your jewelry? Cold emails. Cold emails? Cold emails. How we're big, yeah. <laughs> we're big believers in cold emails. And it's the same way we got all of our investors. We didn't know anyone in the space. I love it. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. That's beautiful. And it's lovely that it's it's a thoughtful ring. And I think that's absolutely the way the market is is moving. It's very big. Watch me. <laughs> Watch me, because I might just forget to take that off later. So what's your plan? I mean you the, so you clearly love what you're doing. Uh, is your plan to get investment, grow the brand and exit it? Or is, it, is this something that you see as a life, lifetime's work? We do think like definitely there's opportunity uh, to exit at one point. Uh, as we said, we're early on in the market. All the traditional brands are definitely looking at the space. 
um, and that's where we think there's an opportunity to kind of like at one point uh, exit the company. I think you've got us all mesmerised. Mm -hmm. Certainly got us all thinking. The biggest question one, one will ask, is there movement on the 3%? We have to try that by making an offer. <laughs> Jess Sydney, this is the first time, I'm going to be really honest, this is the first time I've ever been in an investment discussion with a diamond-based high-end jewellery brand. So this is kind of new territory mm -hmm. for me. And I'm clearly realising that I can't apply the usual metrics that I would to value a business mm -hmm. to value this business. Because you have raised big funds at a very high valuation long before you were profitable. And I think if I don't take this opportunity, I will look back on it and regret it. So. Thank you. I'm going to offer you all of the money for the 3% you've asked for. Thank you. Thank you. You two are very good in this space. Yeah, you've done really well. And I think I would be a perfect partner for you. I really do. I have all of the contacts to make this business big. I'm very close friends with the, the owners of Cartier um, as a family, um, wonderful family. I just think I've got the entire package and then Sarah comes in and offers you that, um, which I think is, I do think it's rich at the moment. Um, So Sarah's cocked it up, really, to be honest. <laughs> well, you can make a different... You can make another <laughs> offer. I just spice things up. <laughs> yeah, make a, make a different <laughs> offer. I'll think about it. I'm not friends with the Cartier. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to make that perfectly clear, in case it comes down to a decision and... <laughs> full transparency and all. <laughs> I've got some that. great friends. That's not one of them. <laughs> I'll tell you where I am, guys. Might as well. Um, look, you're very credible. However, I, I've got a couple of diamond dealer friends, and I know a little bit about this business. And I ask myself, you know, if I invested 250,000 in other businesses in this sector, I get a lot more than three percent. And to me, this is not going to excite me at three percent. So I'm out. Yeah, I, I'm, I actually think the same. So, sadly, I'm going to say that I'm out. So, I'm quite known for my jewellery, and I get offered collaborations with businesses who will offer me percentages of the business. And I've never done it, because I've never been quite sure that I'm going to be happy about the deep ethics of a business. You know, I thought, I don't want to be promoting something, I'll then find out later, it's a blood diamond, you know, so that's always held me back. And you kind of cleared the way because you've founded yourselves on sustainability and thoughtfulness. Um, so I am going to make you an offer. Um, and I will offer you all of the money. Um, I would love to be part of this journey, um, but I want 5% of the business. Thank you. Thank you. Jess Sydney. Um... I think you are un uninvestable. The story you told me of hounding down Meghan Markle was the moment you had my heart because that's what that's what it takes. But the three percent thing is is difficult. Specifically because you don't need money, what you need is value add. I've spent the last ten years growing the world's biggest brands. That's what I'm really, really good at. So I'm going to offer you all of the money and um, my ask is for 5% as well. Thank you. Do you want to go take... Yes, yeah. Yeah. thank you. <laughs> Jess and Sydney have three competing bids to consider. Sarah Davies has offered £250,000 in return for the 3% equity they were seeking while Deborah Meaden and Stephen Bartlett are both looking for a 5% share.
So firstly, thank you so much for all of your offer and appreciate all the nice words. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry, but we'll have to say no um, to the offers. All offers? All offers, yeah. Just to get this right, so I'm not confused, you came in asking for a quarter of a million for yeah. 3%. Yeah. You've been given that offer yeah. and you've rejected it. So we just think definitely the value added is important to us. And I think like definitely what you said, Stephen, about everything that comes with to build a brand is really what we value most. Um, but unfortunately, like we won't be able to take it at that valuation, but we really came with that goal. Oh, sorry. So Sarah, you're rejecting Sarah's offer. They came for Stephen. They're quite it's clear. What, it's what, that, they just that, tried just to what say. they've just tried to say. They came in for Stephen. Oh. And you can't, you can't move from 3% at all no, under any circumstances. Move. Can I have a minute? Yeah. Thank you. What do you want to do? I just, I just, I just can't. I just, I just can't let you walk away. So you've got a deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you drive the best plug ever. Well done. Amazing. Well done. Congratulations. Well done. A polished performance from Jess and Sydney, who leave the den with a cool quarter of a million. I can't believe we got the PR first. When it came to the equity on offer, the pair weren't budging, but somehow they still secured their chosen dragon. Stephen, look into my eyes, look into my <laughs> eyes, not around. Stop looking at the shiny things. It's wonderful. You've just invested in a diamond business that isn't diamonds. Those founders are diamonds, they're real diamonds, and that's, that's why I invested. We're feeling good, excited, really happy with the outcome. Stephen <laughs> is really the most added value for us today. But to be honest, we couldn't have dreamed of better. Exactly. <laughs>